Happy Thursday, you all. Welcome to Limitless Live. It is Thriving Thursday, and I'm excited to be with you as my inaugural first opportunity to host. And I couldn't ask for a better a better person to host with today. And I'm just excited to be with you all. It's uh, hard to believe it's June 15th, and it's almost uh, summer solstice. Time flies when you're having fun. Well, with all that to said, I'm excited to have the fun we're going to have today. I've got, I'm so honored to be with the Limitless community today and introduce you all to one of my fast friends, uh, a very special guest. So please join me in welcoming the one and only Pamela Matson. Hi, David. Thanks for having me. Speaking of summer solstice, that's my birthday. No kidding. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this is a great month. <laughs> it is. It is. So uh, before we talk about anything, Pam, Pamela, I got to tell you, I am so excited about sharing your background. And I just want, I just want to read this to everybody so that you know, everyone can hear kind of a little bit about you. But Pamela has a decorated educational background with degrees in psychology, business management, a master's in human development, and a doctoral candidate in organizational development and change. Uh, her entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well, and she's a multilingual certified leadership and executive coach sought by many notable executives across industries globally. Uh, she was the former head of executive development at Amazon and currently the SVP of people and orgs development at Outreach, which is a leading sales execution platform. So Pamela, wow. I just am <laughs> curious, uh, before you say anything, what motivates you to lean in and, and push yourself to the limits of both teaching and learning? Uh, you said it, learning. I love to learn. I love to brush up against my capabilities. Um, I love to interact with humans. So for me, I'm a bit of a, a mad scientist around the human condition. So anything to do with motivation, resilience, high performance, connection, that's what drives me. It's so powerful. I just like to listen to you talk, Pamela. You're uh, you really, you do our motivational and you do really uh, resonate with, I know many. And so um, I was gonna ask you before we jump into some of my questions, I was gonna actually, the most important one, I, I, I was reading about you a little bit and um, I hear you're quite the chef. Yes. So what is your favorite meal that you prepare or cook. I would love to share that. And I'd love the audience to weigh in if they want you to come to their house and cook for them. Happy to do that. Um, I, I actually see cooking as a bit of meditation for me. If I were ever going to be on a game show, it would be the game show where you open the fridge and someone says, hey, there's nothing to eat. Um, and I would say, you know, hold my earrings, hold my beer. I got this. Um, I can recreate things. I love cooking. If, if I were choosing my favorite, it would be a toss up. I'm from the South. It would be a toss up of Southern food um, and Thai food. It's so fresh. It's so delicious. I love spice. Mm. I love coconut milk. I love curries and Thai basil. So somewhere between, you know, hot fried chicken and Thai food. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> Just let us know when you're having us over. The whole Limitless crew will happily join you. <laughs> let's do it. I love Ty. Um, so, so let's let's dive in. I, you know, I'm just so intrigued by your background and and all the stories you share with me. But I, I want this audience to connect with you and hear more about how you think about things like culture. And so, I actually, I'm going to read something you shared on your on your profile publicly on LinkedIn that you you shared that intentional culture. And I'm going to say that again: intentional culture is a key differentiator for startups and fast growing organizations. And you further that by saying top performers wanna be in cultures where they can be authentic, authentically themselves, create and grow their craft. Would you mind expanding on what intentional culture is in your mind and, how, and what that means to you? And then secondly, do you describe what good feels like both for uh, you know, leaders as well as for employees within a company? Just really curious about that. I've been a student of culture for probably close to two decades now. Um, it's so fascinating. I've spent a great deal of my career before Amazon helping organizations close the gap between who they declare themselves to be and who they truly are uh, and are now quite hybrid virtual hallways. Culture can be considered, you know, academically as sort of the behaviors 
systems and symbols uh, that, dec- that, that make it like, this is what it takes to be one of us. But when you boil it down, it's how do people feel about going to work on Monday, on Sunday evening, when they're going to bed? How do they feel walking the hallways? How much of themselves do they get to bring to the office? You know, even if it's a hybrid office. You know, I used to use this metaphor when I was onboarding executives at Amazon, I would say, you know, what parts of you did not get a security badge? You know, what parts of you do you sort of like sort of lock in the trunk to go to work? Because people connect to those parts. You know, the the face that you wear when you greet your dog at the end of the day, the face that you wear when you're having a robust, beautiful glass of red wine with your best friend. Like, I want that person to be able to go to the office and I want you to be able to be fully integrated. Uh, So for me, intentional culture is by design and not by default. We're all moving so fast. So if you're in a small company, you know, the, the first, even up to the first hundred, everybody's completely, completely dedicated, committed to the mission for the most part. As you continue to grow, and often these companies are growing very, very rapidly, culture starts happening by default and not by design. So intentional culture is we are focused on congruence, like defining who we declare ourselves to be and then walking that talk and that you can smell it, you can see it. I don't have to give you the voiceover. It's not just a declaration, the banner on our website or engraved in marble in our lobby. It's, it's who we are and it's how we work. Man. Wow. There's a lot, there's a lot to unpack in there. I, um, mm-hmm. thank you. It, it, it's interesting. I, I heard you say culture by default versus culture by design, which mm-hmm. I, I think that's what you said approximately, but, uh, but that really, that's just that concept. And so you're right. We run really fast in startups, especially, but not just in startups. I think it's generally the world right now. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Even think a large organization, if a large organization says, uh, we are a culture of innovation, like we are creative and innovative, but if hierarchy or status or uh, no open debate is the cultural norm, there's no way you can make good on that declaration that you're innovative. You have to create the conditions for that, which is psychological safety. You have to be able to challenge authority. You've got to be able to get ideas from anywhere. When somebody has an idea, you've got to truly listen um, because the way you listen, the way you receive ideas will define, you know, that's, that's the culture. Culture happens. We talk about it as sort of this grand thing. But for me, I just said this to my team yesterday. Culture happens one conversation at a time. Hmm. Another one. Culture happens one conversation at a time. Thank you. I, you know, it's interesting. And speaking of cultures, I, I got to tell you, like, and I speak, for, I speak on behalf of everybody from Limitless that has had an opportunity to be part of your events, be part of your culture. And I've, I've been fortunate because I live in Seattle and you've had a couple of them in our backyard uh, to attend. And I got to tell you, there, in 30 years, I've been running companies and being part of great teams. I am floored by what I felt and, and like the force in which outreach your current organization, like, lives. Can you describe, and maybe it's just what you were describing, but can you just speak a little bit about outreach, who, what you guys do, but also like, what is that that I was feeling in your words? I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what we do and then uh, describe a little bit of the culture, but I'd love to hear like what you felt and what you saw um, to make sure that we are congruent and that we yeah. make good on our promises. But outreach is a sales execution platform. Uh, so we, we've created a platform that is everything a salesperson would need and a sales leader would need to create and close pipeline. Those are the two challenges. So it's very simply put, but this is, you know, AI driven, everything from sales engagement to data analytics, to voice intelligence, to deal health. Um, And it, it automates so many of the work sequences for a salesperson so that we get to be human. We get to do what humans do best and then let AI do what they do best. Hmm. Interesting. The culture is, is 
ah, so high energy. I mean, of course, leading the mothership, Amazon, I was, I was nervous. I was like, you know, I'm making the right choice. I've always been fascinated by startup culture. A big part of my role at Amazon was helping Amazon stay a day one company, you know, day one mentality, startup mentality, moving fast. And what I was attracted to was exactly what you said earlier, this ability to be a part of a team intentionally creating a culture of high performance with empathy. And, mm-hmm. and if I could guess what you felt, it's this like fire in your belly commitment to the mission. It is high energy with a healthy side of, I've got your back. We're in this together. We're better together. Uh, we are learning. We are, like I said earlier, brushing up against the edge of our abilities. And we love that. Like we see a challenge and we see how we're getting stronger together as we approach that challenge. We celebrate our wins. We learn from our losses. Uh, there's, a, there's an edge that we're shifting to, which I'm very excited about. We just rewrote a lot of our core values of playing full out, like, like absolutely bring everything to the field every day. But this, this commitment to win impeccably which is about knowing when to say no and focusing on not just closing a sale, but the relationship. Do I understand your pain points? Have I leaned in? Do I have enough integrity to tell you that the timing may not be right Mm. for a platform yet, but let me tell you the signals of when am I what, you know, I guess the industry would call value-based selling. Am I sharing the proof points of what I'm promising? and showing you that in the product? Or am I just trying to meet my quota? Is this transactional? Or do I care about you, your pain points, your issues, your challenges? Am I with you for the long haul? Um, And as I'm interacting and as I'm facing challenges, am I owning my book of business like a CEO? Do I see my unconditional responsibility for everything that I'm experiencing and operating from a place of I'm going to control my destiny. And that's what you feel. That's what you feel at Outreach. So, okay. So you asked what I felt. <laughs> and man, uh, you know, what I would describe it as belief. I just felt an undeniable feeling of belief, like anything's possible. The energy obviously is a core part of that. But I did, I do, I will say I felt psychologically safe. And I could see that your employees did too. Um, because you could just, I felt there's just open, honest, authentic selves showing up. And then mm-hmm. I think the other, the last thing I, you know, and I think looks like Harry H- HBW there just, mm-hmm. just posted transformation there for me. It, it, and we talk about this a lot at limitless minds, which is, it's not transactional, it's transformational. It's not just about the deal. It's something bigger than that. And I, I know Manny, uh, shout out to Manny and, and the company he's building, uh, with all of your help, but, um, but Manny brought up just this idea of abundance and abundance mindset and mm. that feeling of abundance and belief, you know, it opens the aperture to possibility. And the last thing I'll say, I felt like you're not afraid. No one in that room is afraid is, is, um, has an ego. Like you just lay it all on the table. Yeah. You guys are dancing around and it was comfortable and you were just be, you could be, you know, kind of dorky. You could kind of be yourself. You could have fun. And I, so I just say there's a, a element of just, just have fun and just be, and the, the numbers will take care of themselves. And so that's, that's what I felt. Yeah. Take, take care of the people and they'll take care of your customers. That's the way it works. Another thing about that, that was our SKO. So, I mean, a lot of times SKO is about celebration and, you know, mm. it can sometimes be a big party and, and certainly there is celebration and fun. Uh, it's a big, you know, core value of ours as well, but you could feel in that room, people were there to learn. Yes. People were there to get better at their craft. People were there to be in the gym, not the theater. They weren't there to be entertained. They were there to work. Um, and you could feel that. Like, let me build some muscle together. Let's get better at this. We care about our craft. We know this is an art. It's awesome. Wow. I see a bunch of comments in the, in, in from the, the audience and and I know a couple of questions which we'll get to. Um, really good stuff. Thank you, thank you, Pamela. So, 
as, as you know, we, we, we espouse, we focus also on, on the sales professionals, the selling professionals and the leaders inside of, you know, some of the largest B2B companies in the world. And in, in that journey, we, we've, we've, we've defined our target focus of who we help, help teach mindset and help think, teach the, the fundamentals of how to think and operate and act and, and grow and, and navigate this, this, this pressure environment that we're in, right? Um, so we call our we call our target the modern corporate athlete, and, we, and yeah. so when we serve the modern corporate athlete, I think about outreach in your market. Can you talk a little bit about what you're hearing since you you do sell your platform to CROs and leaders? Um, what what are you hearing from your clients? What what are what are some of the challenges and then opportunities that you see ahead as it relates to our current state of, of the union, if you will? We're in a very, very interesting time. Uh, the you know macroeconomic environment means that we're up against a challenge, and what that translates to for us is this is what we're seeing, is that there are higher level personas involved in sales that wasn't the case you know for some of the the size of deals that we were doing. We're seeing you know CFOs be involved. Uh, chief information officers be involved. And as we move up the enterprise segment, there's a bit of a sophistication there that that our sellers need to embrace and understand. I think that there was, um, with that less inspection on deals, uh, you could sell pretty easily. You know, So I don't think that we've brushed up against our abilities the way we are right now. And I'm excited about that. I think that, again, it's almost like we put more weight on the barbell like we're lifting a heavier weight mm. in a little bit more of a pressurized condition. So guess what? Your muscles are going to get stronger. You talked about corporate athlete. This is an opportunity for us to up level our skill set to speak to more and more sophisticated leaders within an organization and not see a single user, but think about their uh, sales execution as a systemic challenge. So you're understanding both the person you're talking to, the person you're selling to, but you're curious about what are the systemic challenges that you're facing? Where do you not have visibility into uh, your forecast health? You know, how accurate is it? Is that working? Is, is mm -hmm. your team able to speak to these higher order, more sophisticated personas? And if not, how could we help them? How could we help elevate that conversation? So it's a longer sales cycle. There's greater inspection. Uh, AI is an absolute and I would say permanent part of the conversation now. Um, mm -hmm. So this is about upskilling your game, um, which is a perfect challenge for an athlete who wants to get stronger and faster. Wow. That's, yeah, it's powerful. We're seeing a lot of the same, uh, you know, and, and it's interesting as you talk about you know, what, what, what is it? Is it a skill set or is it a mindset? You know, we talk a lot about skill set times mindset equals performance. And mm -hmm. it's just the, the way we broke it, broke it down because many folks invest training and, and development into the skill set. And I think some folks invest in culture, but very few, at least up until we've, we, we've been on the scene, have been able to have a program and an opportunity to invest in mindset, mental fitness, go to the gym, add weight to the mm -hmm. barbell. And but we're pummeled, right? We've got the hybrid model. You've got, you mentioned AI, which I'm glad you brought up. And I don't know if, it, as you think about that, do you see that as a, as a, a, a world where salespeople are replaced or do you see as it's the augmentation? What is your thesis and philosophy on that at Outreach and for you, from you? I'll, I'll answer that, but I want to, I want to speak to something you just said, because I think it's, so important and you're right we don't pay enough attention to it this is why we brought you into that you know abundance uh sko That's is right. because no matter how well you you up level a skill set and you've got even a you know do this do that here's your abcs of what you need to do what you need to say at the end of the day we're human and we're looking for integrity authenticity connection you know these are the components of trust so if you can't own that up-level skill set with believability and credibility, which is all about mindset, and I'm sure you've got a stat around this, but I dare to say that you know the work that you're doing is like, that's in the 90th percentile. You, if you get that right, you're come from place, the mm -hmm. way you're gonna approach it, the, 
the success goal that you make for yourself, like this is the goal that I have that's completely in my liquid of control, how I'm going to show up, how I'm going to stretch myself, how focused and present I'm going to be in this conversation. Of course, we have an outcome goal. We want, we want the sell. We want this relationship. We want this deal to go through. But we're holding ourselves accountable and spending much more energy on how we show up, the levers that we can pull. And that's the work that you do. It's powerful. It's, it's, it's everything. Um, AI, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. <laughs> it's blowing my mind. I, I, I love playing around with ChatGPT. I'm, I'm so proud that we've been leveraging generative AI in our platform um, before it was a common household name. You know, we're just on the edge of that, but we've, we've been doing that since the beginning. Uh, so like email, smart email assist and putting in a natural language and helping you write it and knowing what sequences are getting traction versus what's not. Mm. So no, I don't think it's going to replace uh, the human. I do think it's going to force an up-leveling, uh, up-leveling of the human like we talked about earlier. So the, the differentiator will be sales teams that use AI to be better or, or, or sales teams that don't. Those, will, those are gonna go extinct, the ones that don't. Um, I was watching this incredible TED talk by Sal Khan, the founder of Khan Academy. So if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to go look at it. I think he did such a great job um, squashing a lot of the concerns around AI of, you know, it's cheating or it means you don't have to think because used well, it actually improves your thinking. And what he said was AI assisted, and I would say this for sales, so AI assisted sales execution means that the average seller can become above average mm-hmm. and the exceptional seller can be like game changing because you're allowing this human to be stronger and better. And then you're automating, learning, documenting the things that have worked. So there's not these repeated mistakes. You're, you're, you're honing your science. It's like we we're talking about cooking earlier, you know, it's, It's honing that recipe and knowing that a bechamel without a dash of nutmeg will always be flat. Always. 100% Mm -hmm. of the time. Find your nutmeg. That sounds like a book. I think (laughs) that should be your next book. A book. Whatever you want to do there, Pamela. That's perfect. (laughs) Find your nutmeg. Uh, Don't forget the nutmeg. That's great. You know what? I... Thank you for speaking to, to the to the artificial intelligence piece of us and this discussion about AI because it is it's prevalent it's there we're all learning through it and there's a, there's two sides of the fence on and some in the in between about how to use it and leverage it and is it an advantage mm-hmm. or is it a displacement and I I just think I look at that as you talked about getting to the edge and and yeah. I think where people get to the edge is the fear of the unknown and so when yeah. you think about what's beyond that cliff what if it what if, right? The what if doesn't have to be fall off the cliff. What if, what if I try it? What yeah. if I, what if I, what, what if it actually goes well? What if it actually makes me elite? Um, yes. I, sometimes I wonder if people are more afraid of that what if than they are about the, the what if of trying. I was talking to, uh, we had a, a program graduation yesterday uh, for our director population. It's all about building trust. It's about leading through change and uncertainty and, our guest speaker was our head of engineering, Armitage, and he's had a, a illustrious career from Microsoft. He builds, you know, world-class engineering teams. He's been at Google. And one of the engineers that was in the class graduating said, uh, if you could speak to yourself, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, what would you say? And he said, you know, when you look at my career, especially coming to a startup like Outreach, you might say that I've taken a lot of risks, but... I will tell you, if I, if I met my uh, 10 years younger, 15 years younger self today, I would say, take more risks. That's where the growth is. That's the threshold of your growth and your performance. It's That's where your edge is. Find your edge. Find your edge. Bump up against it. And you talked about a cliff. Even if you fall off that cliff, guess what? You're going to get better at flying. You're going to get better at flying. Uh, he said, take more risks. We don't take enough. We love safety. Well done. Well done. Very, very powerful. I feel like I could talk to you for hours. I, uh, I have one more question. I just want to be mindful of everyone's time, but, um, and I want to allow, there's a few questions that have come in that I want to make sure we get to. 
but uh, I'm just curious, you're a powerful force, you know, uh, a powerful woman and a leader, uh, an executive, and you're coaching, you know, some of the world's best. Um, and you're obviously leading a great organization. So in thinking about women, women leaders and the women listeners and thinking about kind of the gender biases that might exist, um, still mm-hmm. exist. We know they're there. Um, how do you, what strategies, resources, networks, how do you, how do you lean into that and uh, that have helped both you, but also tools that might be able to help other, other aspiring uh, leaders like yourself? Mm, thank you. Thank you for the question. You know, I'm, a, I'm passionate about this area. Uh, we have a program called Rise for our women in sales. We actually combine it with our women in engineering because both industries have a dearth of women. Uh, and RISE stands for recognize, inspire, support, and engage. And, mm-hmm. and here's what I'd say. I'd say that uh, when a lot of the women were coming in initially, it was, it was fascinating to hear them talk about the way that they operated with their teams. And, and it was a bit framed as covert ops, you know, like, I do things differently with my teams. Um, I, I coach and develop a little bit differently. I'm more comfortable with failure. Um, my manager sometimes thinks I don't get into the deal fast enough, um, but I, I like to give time. I'd like to see how this person's going to do it differently. And, you know, over time, we were able to flip that script to say, wait a minute, that's thought leadership. This is not covert ops. This is like, let's bring this over. Let's, Let's talk about how you being a part of your team, so not polarizing um, certain styles, but we're saying you being a part of your team is that's unleashing collective genius. That, 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 this is so powerful to say, the, this is our, we're broadening our leadership range and we're broadening our leadership style and the way you're operating is powerful. Not, not necessarily better than, although the stats would say that women ran teams, they do meet their quota more often, um, but, but shutting them down and having them do things in an inauthentic way is not the end game. Leaders, this is my invitation, measure your success based on the number of great decisions and amazing work that happens when you're not in the room, when you're not in the deal, when you're not in the conversation then you've scaled yourself. If you're at the center of everything, you're actually not a leader yet. And so unleashing the genius of what women bring to the sales industry is gonna change the game. I also say we talked about AI, Uh, guess what that means? Emotional intelligence has just been elevated to like part of the incredible recipe for success. It always was, but now it's even more powerful, even more powerful. So uh, get women on your team. They are force multipliers. These are culture ads. And whatever you do, don't try to fit them in the box of a culture fit because you're, you're missing the point. You know, find out what they add, what they bring to your culture, how they elevate your team and how they bring new skill sets and new thought leadership. Wow. I think I think we're going to invite you back on just that topic. I can only imagine uh, the, the the conversations we could have together further because I couldn't agree more. Uh, you know, we're 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 honored to to have the majority of our the majority of our staff and leaders to be you know women, and it's not that's that's partly by design, but it's you know who's the best for the role, and but but it's been part of our culture. It's part of our growth plan. It's we want to be, have a very diverse work environment and. Um, we would not be anywhere uh, without the, the powerhouse women we have. So I, I, I commend what you said and uh, we're a huge fan of yours and, and just what you're talking about there. So with all that said, I've talked, I've asked you a ton of questions. I have a million more, but I did see a few come in through the wires and I want our audience to get a little bit before we shut this down. So it looked like, so I don't, you can see the, you can see the questions too. I'd like, I'll let you pick one, Pamela, what, what, what stands out? What do you want to answer? Uh, I think there was a question earlier about value-based selling, you know, and, and what that means um, and what questions you could ask. Um, so um, I'll defer to our incredible salespeople. I know that you're, you're one of them, David, so you can, you can speak to this too. But for me, um, it's what we talked about earlier. I care about you as a human and I am interested in the system in which you're, you're playing. I want to look at this systemically 
listen to your pain points, understand your challenges, and then with integrity, be honest and clear about what we have to offer and what we don't. Um, I would say, you know, to the point of the uh, current macroeconomic times, a lot of organizations are focused on organizational efficiencies. So are you helping a sales team execute faster, clock speed, better, make better decisions, more accurate forecasting? And if you're not, like, think about that. Like, what, what, or what value are you bringing? Can you speak to that with true proof points, not just marketing? Are you walking the talk of what you, what you promise? Hmm. That's a great, yeah, that's great. Uh, you know, I, I think the other thing you said up front, just the values of culture, just standards and that you have two ears, one mouth. And yes. More, more, and ask questions more than talk. No one really wants to hear about you. They want to be able to explore themselves and some of the challenges they're working through, right? So I think it's, I really like, I just, yes, 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 on what you said. Um, let, I think we have time for one more and then uh, I want to make sure who else, there you go. Roger Ling, go ahead. Looks like he has, you see that there, Pamela? Yep, yep. Uh, how would you account for the different levels of risk, aversion and tolerance? Oh, it's such a great question. Ah, uh, visceral experience. I know that sounds esoteric, but when you know that you've navigated difficult times and times of change and uncertainty before, like it sort of gets in your cellular level. Like you understand, I trust myself in this. And if you haven't, or if there's low risk tolerance or low change aversion, then then you, you need to add offer a lot more support to the people going through that because they just don't have the experience that they can navigate. I would also say like honoring the fact that we as human beings love homeostasis. Um, we love to burn less glucose uh, and you know burn less energy and less cognitive thought. That's why when you're 16 and learning to drive, it's like report card day and principal's office and you have to look at all the mirrors and then you find yourself 10 years later you know, ending up in your garage, not really sure how you got there, having completed some complex thinking um, and don't even, not even aware of the exits that you took because you've automated, you're reducing the glucose burn and, and cognitive load. So to go toward building a new neural pathway requires energy and there can be resistance to that. So that's where you offer hype, as, as Limitless Minds would say, support, information, and get excited about resistance because the way you handle that as a leader uh, will define how much of it you see because what you don't want is passive resistance. You wanna mm -hmm. celebrate those resistance questions because guess what? That's step two on the change model. Denial is the first one. When they start resisting, they're on step two of four. Well done, celebrate that. Great question, I'm so glad you asked that. I can see where this could be confusing. Basically, humans want to know, how can I be successful? And when you change the game, if they're a star football player and you hand them a lacrosse stick because AI is in the mix, the more sophisticated personas are in the mix and it's harder to do the sell, then, then start talking about the rules of lacrosse. Tell them how they can be successful. Awesome, wow. Really good nuggets. Like I said, do you have a lot? I, I know we're gonna have to go back and grab some of these. Um, you know, now that we're a little bit over, I just wanna I want to bring us to a close because and I don't want to. I really just want to hang out with you. Can we just spend time at coffee and continue this? Because yes. I enjoy it tremendously, and you have so much to add, and I learned so much. So, um, in, in, don't you have an event or something coming up that you wouldn't mind sharing? I, I know that's I do. At the end of the year. I think it'd be great to have people know about that. Would you please do that? I am so excited. They're like, please like follow me on LinkedIn, get my information, but you'll see me post about it. You'll see outreach posts about this, but we are hosting um, the first in several years, a uh, customer facing uh, uh, conference called Unleash, which I love that unleashing the energy, unleashing the corporate athlete, unleashing the sales industry. And I own the track of culture empathy and diversity, but we also have tracks about high performance and pipeline, but I really encourage you to be there. It's like SKO meets President's Club meets Personal Excellence Retreat. 
there's going to be over 15 breakouts in a day of learning. I mean, you're going to have a hard time choosing which one to go to. Bring your entire team. It's going to be not only fun and a blast, but you're going to walk away with so many insights. Awesome. I'm, I'm there. I know Limitless Minds would love to be part of that. And I know yeah. we'll figure that out because there's just so, too many overlaps for this not to be uh, a journey together. So, um, you know, with that said, Pamela, I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of what you're building and what you guys are doing. Uh, we at Limitless Minds, you know, we do this every day uh, at the same time, same place. And we really try to bring the best and the brightest together and some of our world-class coaches to just share conversations, right? And we're here just to con converse and learn. And uh, you're a perfect part of our community. We're, we're honored to have you. And just want to say thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, everybody, for, for taking a few minutes out of your day on a thriving Thursday. Go be thriving and do it together. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pamela. We appreciate you. Thanks, David. Bye, everybody. Um,